five hatreds of the narcissist. The narcissist has many hatreds, but here are five to help you understand the mindset of the narcissist, what truly gets to us, and to aid you in your understanding for the purposes of making sense when you are trying to work out what has happened with regard to the involvement with the narcissist. Understand, this is for information purposes. It isn't to be acted on. Because, of course, when you realize that you are dealing with a narcissist, you should obey the first golden rule of freedom, which is, once you know, you go. You get out and you stay out. This information isn't provided for you to start using it to cause problems for the narcissist, because you're then breaching no contact. You run the risk of adverse consequences, and you will heighten your emotional thinking, making your recovery slower and leading to the possibility that you will be ensnared by other narcissists because of the effects of cross-pollution. If you want to understand more about what cross-pollution is, access the material in the Knowledge Vault. You'll find it very helpful. This, however, is to enable you to understand things that happened in the past so that you can make sense of them, so that you can look at them through lenses of logic to understand, ah, so when I did this, this is what caused the narcissist to react in the way that he or she did. It is done to aid your understanding. For those of you that are more forward with your recovery, you can look at it in a more academic way by understanding what's under the hood, what's under the bonnet, with regard to the narcissist and understanding the way that we think, the way that we operate, the way that we feel. Because as a narcissistic psychopath, I am best placed to provide you with this information to help you understand precisely what's going on. I know myself extremely well. I also know others of my kind extremely well, because I observe, I watch, I listen, and I manipulate those of my brethren as well. I understand what gets to them. So, for your education, here are five hatreds of the narcissist. Number one, not being invited to something. Our massive sense of entitlement means that we should always be invited to events. Whether it is a birthday, a retirement party, wedding or graduation, we should be invited to attend. How can the host not want us there? We are the star of the show, the main attraction, the reason to be there. People aren't there for the birthday boy, they want to see us. They are not really bothered about the happy couple, they prefer to be entertained by us, surely, and our tales of achievement, or for us to exhibit our superlative dance moves during the reception. An event is not an event without us in attendance. We are the archetypal life and soul of the party. Fireworks fly when we appear, Stardust is thrown liberally around, and we turn the volume up to 11. The narcissist cannot comprehend why he would not be invited when he brings so much to the party. Whether those factors are actually genuine or part of the delusion that a narcissist suffers from is irrelevant. The fact remains, the narcissist believes that they should be there. It deprives the narcissist, by not inviting him to the event of a huge opportunity to extract fuel from so many people when emotion will be electrifying the air. It's akin to shooting fish in the barrel and we've not been invited to join in. This not only takes away a golden chance to consume fuel from so many different appliances, but also it threatens our control because it suggests that we are not wanted, that somehow we don't pass muster to attend this event. This, of course, is nonsensical and amounts to a massive wounding to the narcissist by failing to cause us to be able to attend that large event. The narcissist is left believing, how dare they not invite me? It is our right to be there. And the narcissism, of course, will create a reason, an explanation, an excuse as to why the narcissist should be there. Of course, the narcissist has not been invited because they only know the individual's 
at a passing glance. But that doesn't matter, because the magical thinking and the grandiosity of the narcissist makes him believe that he's best friends, that he's a close personal friend of the groom, not somebody he nodded to vaguely at the water cooler at work. He, his sense of entitlement means he should be invited. The narcissist, of course, doesn't realize that the reason they've not been invited is because they caused an almighty fight at the last birthday. But the compartmentalization and the lack of accountability of the narcissist shuts that away in a box, and the narcissist ignores it, and that should be invited. And even if it is pointed out to them, you've not been invited because you caused a kickoff at the last one, that, is a, that explanation is a threat to the narcissist's control, and as a consequence, the narcissism will reject it by saying, it wasn't my fault. Cousin Al caused the kickoff. Or Betsy Sue poured a drink over me. And what was I meant to do? Stand there and take it? At the event, it is our audience, our crown, our delighted guests, not somebody else's. The way that we commandeer other people by seeing them as an extension of ourselves means that they belong to us, not to you. We hate not being invited because it denies us a fuel fest and it threatens our control by signifying that we are not important. And invariably, that is why the narcissist will turn up anyway. A sense of entitlement, an absence of emotional empathy, for how that impacts upon people, no accountability for behaviour, and born out of the need to assert control over the threat to that control by turning up. Number two, coming second. We are born winners, pioneers, leaders and champions. Number one is all that matters. This is where the adoration is directed. That is why the winner's podium is higher than the other two. That is why the winner gets the jackpot, the applause, the admiration, and the plaudits. The winner asserts control. The winner gains the fuel. The winner gains the character traits. The winner gains the residual benefits. We are destined to win, and being the champion is our rightful place. Nobody wants silver. Who wants to be runner-up? That means failure. That means somebody else has bettered you. That means somebody else is going to get all of the fuel. Second is pointless. Second is redundant. We don't want commiseration and empty praise for having come so close. We want to win. If we are second, then we are regarded as inferior, not of the elevated state that we are known for and that we need others to accept and reinforce. Coming second encapsulates all that is associated with the outcome, which makes you who you are and inferior to us, and is not something that should ever be rightfully associated with us, the narcissists. We hate coming second. It means that all of that applause and adoration is being directed to somebody else when it rightfully should be towards us. We need to win at everything, at all times, from being first in the queue, first to be served, the biggest biller, the biggest seller, the one with the best car, the one always people greet first, the one who wins the argument. To do so gains the most fuel and enables us to assert control. And if we come second, it threatens our control and results in a hatred of it. Unconscious, of course, where lesser or mid-range. Conscious, where greater or ultra. This results in the narcissist adopting ways of convincing themselves that they were actually first, that they have been robbed of the win. Sound familiar? That they have been denied the winner's podium. I'm X. I don't lose. Therefore, if I've been determined to have lost, something's amiss here. Somebody must have cheated. Somebody has denied me my rightful win. Their skullduggery effort. And the delusion of the narcissist will cause them to believe that. Second is not for us. Second equates to being a loser. And the narcissist is not allowed to think that way. The narcissism will not allow it, because that means a threat to the control. And therefore, the narcissist's response will be, of course, to reject the winner, to say, he only won because he cheated, or he only won because his race team has got far more money than ours, and that's not fair. He only won because he broke the rules. He only won because the referees are cheat. There will be no acceptance, no generous 
praise for the winner for their achievement. Oh no. The narcissism will cause the narcissist to berate the winner and complain, lash out at coming second. Because that is denying us fuel and we need to bring the spotlight back onto us. Talking of which, the third thing that narcissists hate is the spotlight shining elsewhere. Why are you listening to him and not me? He's an idiot and he knows nothing. Listen to me. I'm far more interesting. Anything he has done, I have done already, and then some more as well. He has a forehead? Hmm, well, have you seen my five head? Don't pay attention to other people. Pay attention to me. The spotlight has to be on the narcissist all of the time. The narcissist lives his or her life as if starring in a, in a movie with a personal soundtrack echoing in his ears as he moves through his day. From the moment he rises from his bed, all eyes need to be on him, watching him, admiring him, and giving him fuel. No matter what he is doing, it needs to be seen by somebody, and the more people, the better, as their viewing is accompanied by their praise, their admiration, their hatred, or their anger. Love me, hate me, never ignore me. It doesn't matter what the emotion is that accompanies their at attention, so long as it is on the narcissist. Send that attention elsewhere. And you are not only denying us fuel, you are threatening our control by suggesting that we are not important, and even worse, that someone is more important than us. That is not right. That cannot be the case. How can you think that the person is more entertaining, better looking, more captivating than us? Train the spotlight elsewhere, and you are telling us that we are not good enough, and we know that we are, aren't we? If you do this, the narcissist then has to react with some form of manipulation to bring the spotlight back onto us. Whether it is knocking over some glasses and smashing them, whether it is booing somebody, whether it is complaining loudly about the way that they've been treated, whether it is suddenly getting up to dance to upstage an individual, perhaps proposing to the girlfriend of the narcissist at somebody else's wedding. You've seen that happen. These are the individuals that are desperate to bring the spotlight back onto them, to draw all of the fuel back to them and to assert control by nullifying the threat to control that exists by the spotlight being elsewhere. Number four, not being given recognition. Our arrival anywhere should be accompanied by a fanfare. We should be announced wherever we go. People should bow in acceptance of our greatness, kowtow to our gravitas, salute, kiss our hands, go down on their knees and do whatever it else is required to exhibit subservience to us. We must be given due accord. Because do you know who I am? We must always be mentioned in dispatches. We must always be referred to during a meeting. We must be pointed out, identified and highlighted in keeping with our superior status. We hate it and cannot stand it when we are not given our right to be recognized. We have a God-given right and you had better comply with your obligation to recognize us and all of our amazing achievements. For if you do not do so, once again, you are threatening our control, and we must act to reject that threat. Number five, being alone for too long. People often think that our kind hate to be alone. That's not quite accurate. We can be alone for a period of time when we have been well fueled. There's always room, of course, for more fuel, but when we have received copious amounts, then we can be left alone so that we can revel in our own manufactured glory and turn our mind to our next conquest. This alone time allows certain narcissists to plot, scheme and plan where they are conscious of what they are. In other, in other instances, it allows the narcissist to pursue individual pursuits. When I mean alone, I mean away from people physically, but also not in contact with them through technology, complete isolation. If we have taken on board large amounts of fuel, we can endure it for some time. Therein lies the important part, for a time. If the narcissist is left alone for too long and the effect of the fuel diminishes because it fades over time, then we become restless, then anxious, and then the panic ensues as the narcissist edges towards the precipice, towards the abyss. Being left alone for too long means that people must not be interested in us anymore, otherwise why are we alone? It threatens our sense of control. They do not want us to they do not want to contact us, interact with us, 
pour their fuel in our direction, make us feel wanted, hated, loved or adored. We have to matter. People must not leave us alone. We must be relevant. Their interests must be elsewhere if they have left us alone for too long, and this is not something that we can stand. We are being ignored, ostracised and excluded. The paranoia of the narcissist leaps into action to cause the narcissist to believe that people are behaving in a treacherous way, that they are deliberately ignoring the narcissist, deliberately staying away, so that the narcissist acts as a consequence of this ever-present paranoia. The narcissist ultimately needs people, needs the fuel, needs you. Did you hear us? We need you. Open the door and let us in. We need attention. We need the fuel, any fuel, from someone, it doesn't matter who. Just do not leave us alone for far too long. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.